Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Martinez here. I am the host of Operation Agency Freedom. And in this episode, we are going to talk about five reasons you are driving your employees to quit working with you in your agency. Not necessarily the most fun topic to think about or to, you know, listen to that like, hey, maybe I'm driving everybody to quit because I'm a horrible freaking manager. But this is the reality is that maintaining your uh, or retaining your employees is going to be one of the most important keys to your success in 2022. You know, like most agency owners, I kind of started out as a terrible manager. I think I'm a much better manager than I was when I started, but I'm not like, I don't think I'm a born leader. And it's just something that I've had to learn over time. I've had some great mentors, but I've made so many mistakes when it comes to managing people. And I know that there are good people that I've lost along the way because I just sucked at managing them. So if you feel like you're struggling when it comes to managing your team, if you're recognizing that your team members are leaving and you can't necessarily figure out why, and you think it might be because of you. And and finally, like if you're not a born leader, like this is definitely going to be an episode that you're going to enjoy. Make sure that you listen to this podcast. Oh, and of course, you know, if you haven't done this already, go to the website, get the show notes. Everything that I mentioned uh, in this episode will be in the show notes and then subscribe. Because if you subscribe, then guess what? You'll get a notification every time we release a new episode. You'll be the first one to know and I'll buy you a taco. So anyways, let's head over to the episode. All right, I'm back. So, you know, as you start to grow your agency, eventually you have you start having to add people and usually it starts with contractors, right? So you've got independent contractors that you found maybe through Upwork or maybe you partnered with somebody. You know, that's how I got started. I partnered with a guy that I met through my BNI group and uh, slowly but surely you start to get clients. And before you know it, you start having to add more people and more people. And then, you know, you've got this team of six people that are ultimately on your payroll and you are responsible for their livelihoods and you now have a full-fledged agency. And it can be very, very scary, especially because most of us are not born leaders. You know, we never had this vision of having a big giant company. We were kind of got started because we wanted this kind of work from the beach lifestyle. So it's challenging. That's the point of this is that like running a team, running an agency is really, really hard. So if you struggle with this, I don't want you to feel bad. I think that 90% of agency owners really have a difficult time jumping into that kind of manager role. So I want to talk to you guys today about the five big reasons that you might be driving your employees to quit. And just to make you feel better, I've made every single one of these mistakes. So if I'm going through this and you're like, oh, holy shit, that's something that I'm doing right now. Don't feel bad because I've already come before you and I've made that mistake. And the best part is that I've I fixed it. You know, if I can fix it, you guys can fix it. Too. The first one is that you are very disorganized and undisciplined. And I know that if I say this right now, you're going to have so many justifications as to why you're disorganized and undisciplined. And it's just not true, right? It's up to you. You're the owner. You can't blame anybody else. The buck stops with you. You have to figure this out. So your team members and people in general, they need structure. They need certainty. That's just the way that human beings are wired. Now, we as entrepreneurs have conditioned ourselves to really thrive on the excitement and kind of like shiny object syndrome of being an entrepreneur. But that's a very small percentage of our life. The majority of our lives as entrepreneurs, we do enjoy structure. We're human beings. That's just the way that human beings are wired. We like the certainty. And so when your staff see that things are constantly changing or you personally are constantly disorganized and kind of don't have your shit together, then the message that you're sending is that you are unreliable and that they can't trust you. You might not have ever thought of it that way, but I hate to break it to you. That's the reality. On top of that, you are setting a very poor example for your employees because most of the time we need them to be disciplined and organized. We need them to be able to follow up on tasks and hit deadlines and make sure the deliverables are going out and that they're correct, right? We need our employees to have that discipline and to be very organized. And if you're not doing that, guess what? They're going to follow your lead consciously or subconsciously. It's really hard to go to somebody and be like, well, you know, you should act this way, even though I personally can't act 
like that, but you should do it. Right. It, it never works. It never works. I don't have kids, but I'm guessing if you try and do that to your kids, they're going to end up doing the thing that you don't want them to do because they see mom and dad doing it. So a perfect example is like, if you have meetings and you're constantly late to those meetings, do not expect your employees, one, to show up on time. You have no place to speak if they're late because you are late. And then they're probably just going to tune out because they're going to be like, well, if, you know, if the owner doesn't take this serious enough to show up on time, then why the hell should I? So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if this continues to happen, if you cannot fix this behavior in yourself, your team members are probably going to quit. They're going to go find somewhere else to work somewhere with more certainty, with more structure. So that's the first one. Second one, and this is really, really hard, is that you are emotionally unstable. So let me ask you a question. Let's just test what happens. You're going through your day. Everything's going well. Client calls to cancel and they say that your team messed up. Everything's a disaster and they want a refund. What is your gut instinct? What is your reflex when you hear something like that? Do you want to pick up the phone and call your operations manager or the developer or designer or ads person or account manager? Do you want to pick up the phone and chew them out? Is that your instinct? Do you want to call the client and chew them out? Or are you able to take that news, process it, take a beat, take a breath, relax, and then figure out how to solve the problem? Now, if you're like Chris from five years ago, immediately... Like without even thinking, I get the email without even thinking. I'm on the chat messaging my project manager like, what the fuck happened? How the fuck could you let this happen again? Blah, blah, blah. Horrible. I was not in control of my emotions when things like that would happen. And I can't even imagine. I'm like so embarrassed to talk about it. I can't even imagine how frustrating that must have been for my team members, you know, my employees. The difference between an average leader and a great leader in my opinion, is that great leaders are constantly in control of their emotions. They do not let the bad stuff that happens, that's bound to happen in any day, they do not let the bad stuff drive them into this tangent of being furious about everything and slamming doors and cursing at everybody. They just don't let the bad stuff throw them off their game. It happens. They process it. They're confident enough. They're emotionally stable enough to be able to just be like, okay, no big deal. I'm able to get it. And they definitely, definitely do not yell at employees. That's an absolute red flag. If you're yelling at employees, even if they fuck up, if you're yelling at employees, that's a reflection on you more so than it is on them. And you need to learn how to manage your employees. If you continue to do this, you're going to absolutely destroy uh, any credibility that you have with your staff. You're going to destroy any trust that you have with them. They're going to stop caring when things go bad. They're just going to be like, oh, oh, well, here I go again. Even when I do good, you know, something bad happens and I'm getting yelled at it and they just stop caring. It's like I heard this in a relationship book recently that, you know, like the indifference, like when somebody stops caring or they have animosity towards their partner, that's typically the end of the relationship. There's no coming back from that. It's the same with employees. Like if you keep throwing these tantrums and the employees literally don't give a shit and they're just like, oh, here Chris goes again, it's over. Your team's gone. They're never coming back emotionally, psychologically, they're gone. And eventually, of course, they're going to quit. So that's number two. Number three, uh, again, one that I'm very embarrassed to talk about. If you've ever talked bad about an employee to an employee behind somebody's back, man, we've got big problems here. And sometimes you do it and you don't even know it, right? You might be out at happy hour with the team members and you got a couple drinks in you. And then you're like, oh yeah, I remember when this person did blah, 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 blah. And everybody laughs. And then when you're not looking, they're like, holy shit, I can't believe that Chris just said that about them. I wonder what he's saying about me when I'm not around. And, and you probably even meant it as a joke, right? You probably meant it as a joke, but guess what? You're the owner. You do not have the luxury of being able to joke about stuff like that. When you do something like when you make this mistake purposely or inadvertently, doesn't matter. When you do this, you've damaged your reputation as a leader. And it's very, very hard to get it back. So never, ever, 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 ever talk bad about an employee behind their back. You should never gossip about an employee behind their back. And I hope that you would do this in your own company. But if you hear somebody gossiping about another employee behind somebody else's back, you should put a stop to it. You know, just establish this as a core value. We don't talk shit about people behind their back. If you got a problem with somebody, talk it out like an adult. And you definitely cannot be contributing to this. Absolute no, no. You can't do it. Once that reputation is gone, once you've 
jeopardized the trust and you've tarnished your own reputation, you're never going to get it back ever. There's a scene in um, Saving Private Ryan. Hopefully everybody has watched Saving Private Ryan. I think we actually make most of our staff watch that movie because there's a lot of great leadership lessons in that movie. And uh, one of these scenes that I love is, uh, you know, the guys are on their, their mission. They started their mission. They're going out to find Private Ryan. And if you've never watched the movie and you don't want me to ruin the plot or whatever, fast forward, but I think most of you guys have seen it. So they're walking through this grassy valley and they're complaining about whatever. You know, I think they're complaining about the mission. Like, why are they sending the six of us to go find one guy? And so they're all complaining and the captain... You know, he's there listening to them, not contributing to the conversation. And then they ask him, like, Captain, why do you think we're doing this? What do you have to say? And then the captain, like, you know, who's Tom Hanks? He's like, I think this is a fantastic mission. I feel deep sorrow for the mother of Private Ryan and the anguish that she must be going through. And I'm overjoyed that I get the opportunity to try and save this young man. Something along those lines. Right. And of course, he's kind of saying it's smart alecky, but there's a massive leadership lesson in that. He says, gripes don't go down. Gripes only go up the chain of command. That's a fantastic kind of like mantra when it comes to people who want to complain. Now, as the owner, guess what? We don't have the luxury of sending our gripes gripes up the chain of command. We are it, you know? So if you need to gripe to somebody, I'm lending myself to you. Shoot me an email and, you know, you can curse out whoever you need to curse out, but it never leaves that email or our call. It never goes down. Gripes go up never go down. Number four, this is a very interesting one because, and, and this is a personal one, honestly, like I feel like different cultures uh, or different people might not agree with me on this and that's okay. My number four, you know, reason why I think that people might be leaving is because you get too excited about things. And I, I like to think that this is a silent killer. There's a lot of silent killers in leadership, but this is a silent killer that, that most people don't realize. If you get too excited about a new product or a new technology or a new YouTube video thing that you saw or a, a new management style that you learned at a seminar or whatever it is, you might actually be driving your team members away. And this is because... If you don't clearly define to each team member how they are going to contribute to this new thing, then they're going to get really stressed out because certain team members will automatically think, okay, Chris is rolling this out. And now I have to figure out how to get this other new shiny object thing done on top of all the other shit that he's given me. And I can't do it. I'm already maxed out. I don't know how I'm supposed to get all this stuff done. You might not have any intention of them doing anything about this. But some people are just going to interpret that as these are the boss's new marching orders and I have to figure out how to get this done on top of what I already have going on. It's very, very stressful for them. Like you think about it, like if you have team members, I'm going to guess that all of them think that they're working their asses off, that they're working as hard as they possibly can, whether that's true or not. Who knows if you're time tracking, you would know, but let's, you know, every team member thinks that they're working their asses off. And so now you, you roll out this new thing and they're thinking to themselves like, fucking Christ. Like, how am I supposed to do this? Like, how am I supposed to get this done? I literally can't push myself any harder. My boss is a crazy person. Shoot me in the head. Or of course I'm going to quit. I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to be able to meet the demands of the job. I might as well quit before I get fired because I can't do it. Like I can't get all this done on top of all the other things I have. So the way that you combat this is that if you get excited about something or if you're rolling something out, you know, put it into context, let the employee know, Hey, this is something that I'm going to roll out. And I've got these people already lined up to help me. And they already know about it. Da, 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 da. You don't have to worry about it. I'm just keeping you in the loop. Or the other thing is that you just don't roll out every crazy idea that pops into your head. You know, sometimes you got to keep that stuff to yourself. I read something today that really resonates with this one right here is it's that you can be crazy, but you cannot act crazy. So you can be excited, but you can't always act excited because if you don't, people are going to quit. All right. We're at number five. The fifth reason why your team members might be, might be quitting. So we know that as entrepreneurs, that we see opportunities everywhere. Like I can literally just walk down the street. Like I can walk down the street with my dogs and then I'll have some random business idea. Like, oh, why don't they have this? Hmm, I wonder if I can create that. I can create that. I should create that. And then you go down this rabbit hole of a new business that you just created in your mind. Some of you guys are listening to this right now and you're like nodding your hands like, yep, that's me. That is a blessing and it's a curse. 
I'm telling you. Like where other people see obstacles, clearly we see the next multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar idea, right? The flip side of that is that we can get sidetracked and distracted very easily. And so you as an owner, as an entrepreneur, you have to learn how to balance that like opportunity seeking part of your personality with your ability to stay disciplined and being able to stay on task. It's really, really important. It's, it's a skill. Like to me, at least for me, that's a skill that I've had to develop. I've had to learn how to trigger my brain to say, shut up brain with your crazy ideas and your shiny object chasing. Shut up. That part of me is off. I'm focused. I don't care what else happens. Bombs can be exploding around me. I'm just going to focus on doing this task and executing this task to the best of my ability. So if you're constantly chasing shiny objects, then you're, there's a very high chance that your team members will leave you because of that. Cause they just, you know, it's annoying if you're not an entrepreneur. It's actually something that we talk about. So, you know, at Dude, we run a mastermind group. We have, we have several mastermind groups. The first one that we put our clients into is called the level one mastermind. I know, super creative name. We spend two weeks on developing good habits, you know, developing discipline, developing a framework to incorporate discipline, not just into your business, but into your life. And that's the reason why we spend two full weeks on that is because it's something that we as entrepreneurs really, really struggle with. And without that foundation, it's really, really hard to progress as an owner, you know, to develop the right mindset and the right discipline. So that was a little plug for the mastermind group that you get when you sign up, sign up with us. So getting back to the shiny object, like if you are constantly telling your staff about the latest shiny object, and then you abandon it in a week or two weeks, you end up hurting your credibility. It's like the boy who cried wolf, the boy who cried wolf. If I remember the story, right. Is they kept saying, there's a wolf, there's a wolf. And then there was no wolf. And then everybody stopped or started ignoring him. And then what happens? A wolf shows up and eats the little fucker. So it's the same with you. Like if you are uh, constantly complaining about, you know, or talking about the latest shiny object, your people will get excited about it for a little while. And then they just become tone deaf and they're just like, oh God, come on. He's just going to forget about that in a week. Imagine though, like if there's something legitimately awesome that you're rolling out and you want people to get excited and get behind it or whatever. And then, but they've already been, they've become so jaded because of all the other shiny objects that you let go by the wayside because we're distracted by everything. It sucks. You know, you can't get everybody on the same page. So bottom line is like, before you get super excited about something and you want to roll it out to the team, make sure that you have a plan behind it. I would say just cancel, like get off the email lists of all the latest, like, digital marketing crap that they're selling. I think that's the website AppSumo or something like that, where they're constantly having these flash sales on new essential, like essentially they're just like toys that we never end up using. And just they get on our monthly subscription expense list. And we're like, oh, what's this? Oh man, I have $3,000 going out the door for things I never, ever use. You know, like I understand you're probably a visionary. This is part of who you are is creating these crazy ideas. If you recognize, and if you have the budget, go out there and get yourself a COO, somebody who can literally just like staple your ass to the chair from time to time and kill your crazy ideas when it's necessary. Find one of those people to be your right hand woman or man to help you run the company. Again, because if you don't solve this problem, your employees are going to quit. Those are my five, five reasons. Let me just review them again. So number one is you're disorganized and undisciplined. That's number one reason why people are going to quit. Number two is that you are emotionally unstable. And in parentheses, you act like an asshole from time to time and you take it out on people. Number three is you talk bad about employees behind their back. Number four, you are getting too excited about things. And kind of related to that, number five is that you're constantly chasing shiny object, objects. People don't care about things that you talk about. You are you have a history of abandoning them. So if you recognize that you're doing any of these five things, I want to give you some hope. You can absolutely fix these problems, character flaws. Definitely. These are all skills that you can learn and develop over time. I'm living proof of that. Um, so don't give up. And uh, if you have any uh, questions or you want any advice, feel free to reach out. More than happy to point you in the right direction. And of course, if you're a dude client, we help you fix all these things anyways.
All right, guys, have a wonderful day. I will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you could share it with your friends, family, and basically anyone who will find the same value in this episode that you did. And to get the latest from me, then let's definitely connect on social media. You can go to Facebook, facebook.com forward slash dude agency or Instagram at dudeagency.io, or you can check us out on YouTube on our YouTube channel. And then, of course, you can always visit our website at dudeagency.io, where you can see all of our other episodes of Operation Agency Freedom. You can also register for any live trainings that we have going on on how to run a highly profitable agency. And of course, you can see how we help digital agencies with the people, the processes and the education so that they can take on more projects and scale profitably. Thanks again. And I will see you next time.